In the next few videos, we're going to go over translation. This video is going to cover ribosomal structure as well as the process of translation, including initiation, extension, and termination. So to begin, ribosomes are molecular complexes made of ribosomal RNA and ribosomal proteins. These RNA protein complexes are responsible for translating mRNA into proteins. Within the cell, ribosomes can be found either in the cytosol as free ribosomes or bound to the rough endoplasmic reticulum as membrane-bound ribosomes. The type of protein that is being translated determines the type of ribosome that is going to be translating the protein. For example, cytosolic proteins are translated by free ribosomes, whereas membrane proteins, as well as secreted proteins, are made by membrane-bound ribosomes. Now, if you take a look at this diagram here, you're going to see that the ribosome has two subunits. There's a small subunit as well as a large subunit, and the mRNA that is being translated is sandwiched in between. For the MCAT, you do need to know some numbers related to the small and large subunits, and you also need to know the difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes. So for prokaryotes, you should know that the small subunit is 30S, the large subunit is 50S, and the combined ribosome is 70S. These numbers come from centrifugation. You don't need to know much about how it works, but you should be able to associate these numbers 30S, 50S, and 70S with prokaryotic ribosomes. Eukaryotes are similar, except we have different numbers. We have 40S, 60S, and 80S. So the small subunit in eukaryotes is 40S, the large subunit is 60S, and the combined both subunits is 80S. Okay, so now that we know the structure of a ribosome, let's talk about how a ribosome actually translates a protein. And the first step is initiation. And again, there is a difference here between prokaryotes and eukaryotes that you do need to know from MCAT. In prokaryotes, ribosomes bind to what is called the shine dalgarno sequence. This is a specific sequence of nucleotides just before the start codon. So you can think of this as the sequence that recruits the ribosome to an mRNA molecule. Now, another important difference between prokaryotes and eukaryotes is that in prokaryotes, transcription and translation occur simultaneously. So what that means is, as the RNA polymerase in prokaryotes is producing the mRNA, before the mRNA is finished, translation is already starting. So the two processes are occurring simultaneously. Now, in eukaryotes, Ribosomes are recruited by the 5' prime cap on mRNA. Remember, the 5' prime cap is one of the post-transcriptional modifications that converts pre-mRNA into the mature form of mRNA. Translation starts at what is called the COSAC sequence. The COSAC sequence is a conserved sequence found in eukaryotic mRNA, and it includes the start codon. So again, make sure you are able to relate these different terms to prokaryotes and eukaryotes. The shine dalgarno sequence for prokaryotes and the COSAC sequence for eukaryotes. All right, now for eukaryotes, transcription and translation does not occur simultaneously. Transcription and all transcriptional processing occurs in the nucleus. Translation occurs in the cytosol or on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. All right, so once initiation has begun, the start codon, AUG, is going to recruit a tRNA with methionine on it. We can now look at extending this peptide chain. There are three different sites in the ribosome called the A site, the P site, and the E site. The A site is the site where the new tRNA with amino acid binds, the P site is where the tRNA with the growing peptide chain binds, and the E site is where the empty tRNA exits. And we can best understand this by taking a look at this diagram. 
So you can see, to begin, you have a tRNA with the anticodon that matches AUG, and that tRNA has methionine. You can also see a second tRNA with a different amino acid. So right now, they're occupying the A site as well as the P site. What happens is the peptide chain in the P site is going to attach to the amino acid at the A site. And once that attachment occurs, the ribosome is going to shift and move one position forward along the mRNA. So now you can see that the peptide chain with two amino acids is again on the P site, and then in the A site, a new amino acid is going to arrive with a tRNA. So again, this process will repeat itself. So the growing peptide chain will attach to the amino acid at the A site, and then there will be a shift. So every time the empty tRNA is going to leave from the E site, the peptide chain continues to grow at the P site, and new amino acids arrive with tRNA at the A site. Okay, so now that we know how the peptide chain extends, let's talk about termination. So we know that at some point during translation, the ribosome is going to encounter a stop codon, and there's one of three stop codons. The stop codons do not encode for a tRNA. There are no tRNAs with an anticodon that matches the three stop codons. So instead, a release factor protein binds. And when the release factor protein binds, it's going to disrupt the ribosome mRNA complex. And when it breaks it apart, that's going to cause the polypeptide chain to be released. And essentially, translation has been completed. Okay. So these are the three steps of producing a peptide chain, initiation, peptide chain extension, and termination.